you advocate doing the best you can, it demands perfection. You, you pray with me. See, there's a subtle, so you'll have to study with me. Get your Bible. Study with me. All right. Now, in every dispensation, God has advocated and demanded perfection. It's not just something uh, in this dispensation, or uh, since Pentecost, but in every dispensation. Turn to uh, Leviticus chapter uh, 20. Uh, 2, verse 20. Live it, if you will. All right? But whatsoever hath a blemish, whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer. Now, need you follow me closely? Because it's a subtle subject. And you find yourself confused. So God help us out. Like most people are. Come on with it. But whatsoever hath a blemish, whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer. Thou, that ye shall not offer. For it shall not be acceptable for you. Wait, 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 wait. It won't be acceptable. <laughs> Do you hear? Now, even though you're sacrificing and you you are gloating over your religiosity and, and uh, how stringent you are with your doctrine and your standards, but the word of God said, wait a minute, even though you're offering sacrifices, even though you're loyal to your religion, but if you got a blemish, even though you offer sacrifices in abundance, but if it has a blemish, I won't accept it. So what they do, they have to examine their offerings and go all these to see if they had a win or blemish or, or some kind of imperfection. You want to show you something? Look how meticulous they have to be in their searching, in their examination of them. The people not just, well, God understands. We are, in fact, if you are careful, you find yourself just uh, justifying anything and say, this is the best thing I can do, despite God's demands. All right. What did he say? But whatsoever hath the blemish, All right. that shall you not be, offer. You not be, be careful. Often you be careful about your shouts and your amens and, and your exhortations and preaching and messages. Be careful because it will be accepted. Be, look, just look all underneath it. Uh, check for winds and, and knots and, and, uh, and imperfections. He said, be careful. Take your time. Because this is not just a routine. This is a, this is a, a critical examination here. Come on, come on, children. Now here. And then two, well then you say, why is it, it uh, advocated more strongly today than uh, ever before? Well, because people are sensing their plight and they feel hypocritical if they deal with it. Or if they demand it. So God help us out here. All right, so you, you follow us here. We try to expedite it as much as possible because it's an inexhaustible subject. All right. Now, he said, now, this was a command. You understand? See now, you begin to get this spirit of God. It's not an option. He said, walk before me and be thou perfect. That's an edict. That is a demand. Now, wait just a moment here. He said, now, walk before me. That means continuous. Not just one great big burst of inspiration, go to the altar and make some great claim, walk before me. He said, my eyes on Walk. Get, get, the, get the, the language here. Walk before me. Before me, because, see, I'm the judge. I'm the one who will assess your devotion. I'm the one whose eyes that you are, are before. So you walk before me. Now, you walk before your friend, because they like your intimacy that you are, you in it. And if somebody that you don't like, you, you begin to look out every floor that they might have. You walk before me. Aren't you glad that God is the judge? And uh, uh, those who are antagonistic towards you, and those who, who are envious and, and malicious in, before you, and you're so glad, God walk before me. Because now, I'm unmistakable. Now, your friend might overlook them deliberately because what they, they might enhance your testimony. Or somebody might do it because they don't want to bash you. Your husband might do it because you don't want to eat, you might not fix his meal right next time. Huh? Or your wife may say that because she might uh, delete her, her, her allowance to walk before me. Walk before me. This is the situation. This, not one great big effort would walk before me consistently. And be thou perfect. But before me, I got mad on you. I got mad on you. You disqualify yourself. 
Watch your spirit. See, you do it and say, and apologize for just a moment here. Now you can mar your perfection. Let me tell you something. Because it's so stringent, people will just say it's unfeasible. It, you just cannot be done. And you can content yourself with that. And that's why a false religion advocates that. Now here, turn to Hebrews chapter 6 quickly. We'll move on. All right. What are you? Uh, Hebrews 6, third verse number 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of... Therefore, leaving the principles of what? Of the doctrine of Christ. Of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection. Wait, let us, wait just a moment. Perfection is not a journey, it's a destination. Mm. You understand? Amen. Amen. Many people uh, content themselves that I'm working on it. I got a few more things that I got to deal with. And you said that for 20 years. And you know you're afraid to advocate it too strongly because people, people sense it, your imperfections. Some accuse you, we know it's unjust, and we understand that. But God knows about that. But, see, but now, but, but, uh, but people maybe have exposed their spirit uh, in conspicuous places. You understand? You want to see children different? Let me show you something. Do you know in the homes if people see manifest now? We don't, we not, we're, we're not talking. We're not going into all the detail. We're not talking about a lack of knowledge or uh, that you might have pretty vision. You might call somebody John and Jack at a block away. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about no nitpicking here. We're talking about something that's absolute. Really we, we're not talking about somebody who does a uh, false finding. We're not talking about that. We're talking about something that you must have. And, that, and, I, and God sees it. We're looking through God's eyes. You understand? All right now. And many people have just given up on it. I can't do it. And go to despair. I mean, don't do that. Because if God told you to go, you can't go. If God says it's, 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 it's uh, feasible, then you can't accomplish it. Amen. Oh, yes, you, yes, you must. And you must. He said, Abraham, God would not give us an edict that we could not do. He would not give us a command that we cannot make, reach. He said, Abraham, walk before me. I want to use you. But you got to be perfect because you need to know who people are. Now here, even in your home, and you notice down the line when he got ready to uh, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, how, are you praying with me? Can I hide this thing? Abraham. Amen. Seeing that he would command his household and command his children. Those are under his auspices. So in other words, you got to have your house under control. Those who are under your auspices. I mean, when they're grown, they grow young, they got their own house. And I mean, listen, that was my your, perfect, your perfection. I know he'll guide his house. I know he'll command his house. That's what he said. That's strong language. I know he ain't able to do it. So, but now here, what? Now, most people have those flaws. You won't, you won't let your, your, your son wear skin tight pants that show all his organs. <laughs> yes. And your daughter wears mini skirts and, and all these funny kind of things that show in front and hand down behind. They make TV things and hide them in the basement. Command this house. No, we don't do that here. We don't. Well, mama, everybody will do it with this moment here. <laughs> everybody don't run this house. I, I command my house. Well, then we might, we might drive them away. Well, they're already driven away. That's true, man. That's right. Well, that's the situation. Well, some people say about the same thing about church members. Well, they're, uh, you, you preach the profession, you're going to drive them away. Well, they've driven away already if they don't accept it. And many people refrain from doing it because of that fear. It's because it would be unacceptable among the people. God help us here. And when Jesus began to preach that, God said, many of them followed him no more. He would, well, Jesus, so you go also? This, this, this is the standard. And you take it or leave it. But you're going to be judged by it. You've got to come before me in the judgment. 
All right now. I'm gonna I try to hit the high points here. Now uh see now uh it's a destination. It's obtainable. You can reach it. It's not something you just see. Many people uh pacify themselves by saying, Well I'm I'm headed, I'm getting better, I'm doing better, I'm doing better. But they're constantly measuring, but never really reaching a destination. Now we a lot of questions will have to be answered here. How do you know when you reach it? That's, that's, that's a, a significant question. How do you know when you reach it? Now I'm going to show you something, but you pray and pray hard. But now, whatever we preach, however clear it is, uh, you can uh, dismiss it from your mind for whatever reason. But you'll be, you'll be accountable for it. All right then. Uh, you might say, then how do you know? How do you go about it? Well, all of those questions are legitimate questions. Why? Because something of this magnitude, you need to understand it clearly, and, and we need to know that people are not pushing you beyond the mark. See, if that be the case, if you decide that, then you just throw it out the window and forget it. If you figure somebody that's going beyond the mark, it would be ridiculous. So that's why we will stay in the Word of God today. It's in the Word. Now, I say now, uh, see, perfection, it's not a variable. You follow me? It's, 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 it's an absolute. You follow me? So here there's the situation, and you pray. It's an absolute. So we, we've got to deal with it in that vein. All right, so now, uh, the question might arise. Listen to me now. Now, it must be processed, but it's not indefinite. You follow, you, you follow me closely, because this, this is quite delicate. See, uh, but it has to bounce go on to perfection. But now, many people take advantage of that. See, now, uh, as I say, most religions advocate perfection of a kind. They say, you are, you are traveling in that direction. And when you get right, you fall off the tree. <laughs> when you go away, you fall off the tree. You so get it. So anyway, and so then they satisfied them and said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing better. I'm growing. Wait, there, there's a the growth. There's a the growth. So it, this subject is such, uh, so vast that uh, you, it'd be impossible to uh, cover every aspect of it in one message, yeah. maybe in a series. But you, but you're going to have points here that the essential points. You understand? I hear. Because too many people have intended themselves, knowing that they are not at the mark, even though they've been around for decades. Well, it doesn't take a decade. And not only that, see. Now, the question might arise then, if it's a necessity, well then, what about people who have not reached it? And they die. Well, this is the situation we get into. And I don't I don't know who did that at all. You, you, you follow me? Because I, I did not want to get ahead of myself here. I'm going to do it in a, in a proper sequence here. Hello. All right, all right now. Uh, I said, it's a process. Well, anything you go through the process. If you go to the military, uh, uh, when we were in, in, in court, and uh, you had to go to boot camp, which you almost rather be dead. But they, they're processing you, because we're in a, we're in a war here. <coughs> and we've got to process you and bring you to a certain me mentality here. You can't fear that. You can't be, uh, you cannot be too conscientious here. You just follow commands. And whatever that involves. You understand? Now, all right. Now, you must be processed. Now, this is the delicate aspect of it here. Now, you must, uh, James and the apostles, they made the process clear. They didn't even ambiguous. They, they, they made it clear, but, uh, and I say, but, you got to have an honest heart to, to, to accept it and to look into it. All right, well, well here we go. All right, then now, tell uh, James, Book of James. You follow us here? We, we, we don't know, we're a long time, we know you have to travel, some of you and all this kind of thing, but, but please, take this with you. Come with it. James 1, verse number 2. Well, well, read the entire, not the entire chapter, but the first verses. 
James, a servant of God. James, a servant of God. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Now you follow me, you ask, you ask the question in your heart, in your mind, in your so uh, you ask, how do we accomplish it? If it's just feasible, how do we come by it? Well, we're not going to leave you out there. And James didn't either. Amen. Now, if it's a necessity for heaven, well then, we can't just leave you hanging here and wandering and calculating. You've got, we got to be clear. Or oh, heaven come on then. My brother. My brother. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations. Now, you listen here. Now, that is a, a grueling time. Falling into temptation, count it joy. Now, how in the world, here you are hanging between heaven and hell, the devil trying to de destroy you, and you're going to be joyful in temptations? Count, count it joy? You, you, well, sometimes you can't see this joy, but count it joy anyway. <laughs> you can't see no delight in this, but count it joy. All right. Why? Now, this is why you count it joy, and how you must count it joy. Otherwise, you can't take it. Otherwise, you just uh, uh, cast it aside and say, well, it's impossible, so forget it. Now I'm going to show you. Here, here we go. All right, give us the process. Come Knowing on. this. Knowing this. That the trying of your faith. The, wait a moment. Oh, uh, the trial of your faith. Worry it, patience. That's what the one you've got to go through. Right. Your faith has been tried. And you don't have no option when I did uh, pass a, 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 a message. You can't do that. You've been tried. You've been tried for a reason to determine your worthiness. You understand? See, when God tries you, He's not trying to destroy you. He's trying to let you see yourself and your plight so you know what to do to reach your goal. Good word, good word. See, sometimes we get an attitude toward God. We charge God for allowing all these things to come our way. All these negative situations, and all these gut wrenching situations. You, if you're uncareful, you'll choose God. I was all quiet. Why did I have to go through all this? I didn't have all this stuff in the world. All kind of wild stuff. Yep. Loose talk. Come on with it. Knowing this. Knowing this. That the trying of your faith. The tr this is the one. See, your faith must be at a workable level before you can please God. Without faith, uh, it's impossible to please God. I got faith. No, the level of faith you got to have. Not just uh, some wild testimony, I got faith, but there's a level of faith that you must have to please God according to the word of God. The Bible says, without faith. Now, you know what? He didn't leave you that. Now, there's a whole catalog of instances and miraculous happening that came to pass as a result of faith. And he said, in case you are in a quandary as to what it's all about, I'm going to itemize it for you. And you read it, how that uh, Abraham at God's word just left, not knowing where he was going. God didn't give him a destination. He said, strike out and leave your people here. And you no, know, you can't be sentimental here. Leave your people, leave everybody. And, and I'll tell you what it was. You just strike out. And I'll tell you, like a drill instructor. Left face, right face, to the rear. <laughs> Amen. We put them all. Come to the circuit hall, tell you what to do for. You, you, you gave him too much at the office and said, Halt. Come on, come on. Knowing this. Knowing this. That the trying of your faith. The, listen, God is trying you because he has to prove you. You understand? You found to, to prove your worthiness. He want to use you in some capacity. But for you to be used uh, to the fullest, you ain't got to try you and, and determine whether or not you are eligible. Many times people come, but I want to do this, I want to get the choir. Well, yeah, we understand that if you got a melody of the voice, but it takes more than that. See, you can't sing in the spirit without the spirit. You might sing in a spirit. You can be an entertainer like those. Like those gospel groups, like uh, Jane Cleveland and those. You understand? And you might have a little bit of voice and you might make people cry and shout. That's not who we're after. 
Come on. Knowing this. Knowing this. That the trying of your faith. The trying of God help us here. Now wait a minute here. Now I think we almost got to go over to something else here, but we don't have time. The trying of your faith. Well, what do you do when you funk? You have tests in school, in grammar school, high school, college, graduate school, but why? They are trying to determine your capability to see if you're worthy to receive a, a degree, a diploma, and work effectively in the field that you've chosen. Those tests, they're trying to test your intellect and the sharpness of your perception. You understand? Why? Because you, you're representing the company. And they want somebody going to embarrass them because of that inability to relate. What? God tried Job because Job was representing him. And the devil, and the devil challenged God. See, the devil is, he, he's praising, he's praising. He's challenging anybody. Wait a minute. God says, when he was going up and down in the world and walking to and fro in it, he said, have you considered my servant Job? Lord, are you going to risk uh, the credibility of your kingdom here by acquiescing with the request of the devil? Why did the devil go by the way? That's your servant. Well, the devil boasting. I tell you what, give it to me one on one. Now bring him back in the body bag. I mean, he tells God, the devil is lost anyway, so he don't care. He'll challenge God anyway. And so God, whatever. He don't care, because he got nothing to lose. And God says, he's a perfect man. Perfect, here we go. Upright. Love is righteous and as true as evil. And so, and he was there. Oh God, what would have been the situation? The Bible would have been so deplete without Job. All through the Bible, we go almost to the end of the Bible, Job, the patient of Job. But God said, I'm going to prove to you that I have a man that the best you can throw at him. You can take him on the shield. Keep right in the midst of it. Now, well, it's too bad you have to search all over the world to find somebody like that. You're walking through and through the earth, trying to find somebody. And God's with me. What, what about? What about Larry? No. Uh, what about Johnny? No. Let me tell you, I, just, I, just, I did have somebody. <laughs> What about, you know, no. what about Mary? No, 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 no. It is said that God has to grip the bottom and find somebody to stand for him. They got confidence to stand on him in all circumstances. Isn't it wonderful? Well, it, it, is, it is said that God has to go that far. That he can't just run it. Well, everybody can't be saved. Well, just get anybody. No, 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 no. Everybody talking about having going to hell. So let me see. So I got to be very selective here. How embarrassing. It would be to uh, give him my best representative and he flunked. Mm. Are you eligible for God to use you as his representative? Amen. And, and, and the whole thing seemed to uh, rise or fall as a result of, 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 of the outcome of your standing? And the devil said, you see that group? They were standing one time. But I broke them. See that group? They were standing one time, but I broke them. Look at them now. See that individual? I remember when his convictions were intact and he wouldn't move an inch if it meant his life. But look at him now. See that individual that he preached the gospel? If he stood and he was known throughout the earth for his standing, but look at him now. And I got a whole catalog of them. The devil stand for God. So. Who is this joke? Give it to me. Put me in the arena with him one on one so that I won't have to deal with a whole lot of other things and I bring him back in the body bag. Here. How selective would God have to be in this crowd this morning? Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that something? Now, what, when you 
would feel bad if God looking for a representative and he had to hold it, you know. Oh. No, you have to be You know yourself. No, no, I got to give you too much at stake. Too much at stake! Lord, give me somebody who represents what the Church of God is already all about. People have deviated so much that it's, it's almost beyond recognition. So give me somebody who's standing four square on all of the principles of the Church of Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Despite the opposition from within and without. Show me somebody. Show me somebody. Show me somebody. Show me somebody. Some people standing in their own estimation, but I mean according to the Word of God. That then that brought deliverance and healing and gifts of the Holy Ghost in a real way. Show me somebody. I got somebody. God now, God gonna preserve, gonna preserve him somebody. Don't worry about that. You understand? He'll never be without a witness. Because the gift of him won't prevail. He will do great damage, but he's not gonna prevail. That won't be the case. And you can be the one that represents if you want, if you want, if you're willing to go through and let God protect you to that extent. You can be the one, you can be the one, you can be the one. No, you wanna be one single special. You wanna be one who gives a 15 minute testimony. You don't, want to, you don't want to go through nothing to have to have a real testimony. All right, you praying with me? On me. Come on. Knowing this. Knowing this. That the trying of your faith. That the trying of your faith. Work is patience. It's not just inconsequential. It's not just something you're doing. Something that you're randomly involving yourself in. But you're doing what? Work is patience. Listen, the trial of your faith is working patience. Work is patient. Listen to me now. It work is patient. Now, you know, just by most people that me regards to it, they have an element of impatience. They don't call it, they won't call it, they call it by another name, but despite you call it what you want to call it, God labor. Come on. But let patience have her perfect. Let patience, let patience have a perfect way. Let, let patience complete. What else? That ye may be perfect. Now if you don't, now you better watch it, watch it. Now if you don't do it, you won't be perfect. If you don't let God work with you and bring things your way, grievous things, grueling things, and let God work with you as long as He wishes to, if you abort it, you abort your salvation. You'll never know what perfection is all about. See, many people go away with it, but when it's become too excruciating, they, 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 just, they just put it aside and say, well, I'm doing good as they are. Other things not doing it. They seem to be doing all right. You can't judge yourself by other people. That's what we're predicting we're in today. Come on with it. But let patience have her perfect Let work. patience have her perfect work. Let God get through with you. Stay in the furnace until God get through with you. If you never turn the heat down. You started off shouting, but now you're doubting. Let, wait a minute, you want to know the process. We want to tell you how to get there, but we give you the root. We give you the root. They have no alternate root. Come on with it. But let patience have her perfect work. Let patience work. have a perfect work. That ye may be entire, perfect and entire. That is it. You might be, what? Perfect and entire. Now if you don't let patience have a perfect work, you can't be perfect. Read it again, read it again, read it again uh, with emphasis, come on. But let patience have her perfect let work. Let patience, let God leave you in the furnace. In the most uh, painful situation, in the most trying situation that's imaginable. And don't give God a limit. Years ago when I first started, I was, they thrust me in charge of a congregation. And, uh, well, they knew how I stood even though I was not even uh, just starting in the ministry. And one of these says, well, Emerson, uh, I want to let you know, I got a, an affliction here. And if God don't leave me by Monday, I know who can. <laughs> Doctors are walking. <laughs> go get, go for go, go hold God hostage. By the time I give him a limitation, who are you? Putting God on probation. If you don't come to my rescue by this time, then I know it's matter who you are. Oh, my God, put on the front, put on the front of the call of God. You advocate it. If God doesn't do this, amen, well, I, I know someone who can. Because my friend did it, and they came out all right. We did this on this morning, church. Now do you see why uh, perfection is such a rarity? What, 
People will not let patients have a perfect word. God's trying to prove you. So you have a testimony. A testimony is not something you get up and say, I think God saved me, I think God's doing this and giving me uh, another, another. Okay, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but let patients have a perfect word. What? But let patients have her perfect word. Let patients have her perfect word. Let me stew until he's through. Come on. That ye may be perfect. Now, you cannot be perfect and entire. Uh, wanting means lacking. Lacking nothing. I mean, God wants you to be complete. Lacking nothing. You understand? Some people are, are doing 100 here and uh, out of left field over on the other side. God said, I want you to be perfect and entire. Not going to boast about your strong points. I've been living in field in 25 years. You mean I haven't touched a woman in a while? That's wonderful. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. That's clear. But now, but God wants you to be perfect and entire. Wanting or lacking nothing. Who you know like that? Well, I know however and whoever. And whether anybody that God's standard. That's God's standard. And every honest soul should be striving with all of their might. And not just talking. I'm seeking the Lord in. I'm going on a three-day fast. Well, that's wonderful. You know? But is there a consistency? You understand what I mean? Is there a determination? See, you got to be deterministic here. See what I mean? You can't just draw on a great big brother and go on a three-day fast. And say, well, but you got to be consistent until you reach your destination. And you're not going to reach it otherwise. <coughs> read it again. But let patience have a perfect work. Let patience have a perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire. That ye may be now here and indicate that you may be. Your, your, your perfection is predicated on whether or not you let God get, get through with you. God works in something we go through with flying colors. But when another one comes, we're not ready for it. But see, let God let patience have a perfect work. Let God get finished with you. Let God make your finished work. We didn't come up with it again. But let patience have her perfect work. Let me get in a cage with a with a, a, a female tiger and the meat. The cage. And and last longer than the the lamb that was in there. And she and she never stopped talking. I just be that afraid. I'd be like, oh, I told you all about that the other day. They asked him, the old man, and he was doing well. And they said, uh, John, he said, what do you attribute your good health to? He said, well, I decided my wife got fussing and going off. I said, go down in the woods and sit down. And I've lived a whole good old outdoor life. Never that from that's that I attribute that to my, my, my <laughs> So try it some of your way. Come on with it. But let patience have her perfect work. Let patience have a perfect work. That ye may be perfect. You may be perfect at any time, lacking nothing. So overemphasizing the positive is not what we know here. We want to be thorough. Let patients have a perfect work, that you might be perfect and entire wanting and lacking nothing, that you might be a, a legitimate representative for God. And I rather we're getting a lot of invitations here. I was telling the saints here, a great big invitation of what could be very uh, consequential and revolutionary, if you will. The church of God that we used to go to at that hour and whatnot, we came up and was very impressed. And so you want to take a stand. I've been trying to. You know, you can, look for, you can look for some strong opposition here because they're letting go so far. Now, I, I, you might, might not be able to bring it back. You can save your own self. You understand? You understand? All right, now here. Let God get finished with you that you might be a representative. I said, but now, those who are going with me, I want you to represent the message. We don't, we don't want no, no semi clean showing and all these things hanging off your shoulders and all this kind of stuff. A lot of all this gay, wild colors. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Are you? Please proceed. 
But let patience have a perfect work. Let patience have a perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire. Do, do you want that? Is that, is that? Do you long for that? Is that your ambition? But I may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing so I can be a real, true representative? Amen. And please say, you do it well here, but not what about here? You do it 100 over here, but what about over here? Good work, brother. Good work. Good work. Are you satisfied with being a, 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 a partial saint? Now you should. Now I admit you get tired of trying to stay in the spirit. Or get in the spirit, I should say. We're there. So we must stay. All right, let's go. I'm trying to keep, keep my temper. Sometimes I just don't want to let it loose. Yeah, you get it off my chest. You know, and then you do. So, you hear the situation, you know, God help us out here. You know, now, see, people they ignore this because there are so few people seeking it. And they think it's, it's an option. But I know I'm not perfect. Well, that's a good, because confession is wonderful, but that doesn't solve your problem. Amen. Because you can't be read it again. But let patience have her perfect that work. Let patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect. That ye may be perfect and entire. And entire wanting, wanting nothing. nothing. Lacking nothing. A complete man. A complete spiritual man. You follow me? Some people are so disproportionate. You know, uh, even, even some uh, athletes. Maybe we are, uh, maybe, uh, 250 or 300 pounds and whatnot, and, and they do some exploits. And they got uh, uh, big old burly legs and about a 32 inch waist, I mean, uh, and about a 35 inch chest. Little chest, all this stuff, right now. This is disproportionate. You follow me? They're, they're, they're getting that nasty swallowing chains. You follow me? This, you got a lot of disproportionate things. They, they go over that storm, but I, mean, I haven't done this in a long time, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. What else did you do or didn't do? All right, come on. Let, let patience. Let patience have a perfect have work. Have a perfect work. That you may be perfect and in Now you time. can be perfect and in time, but you got to let patience have a perfect work. Let God get through with him. You know what I'm saying? I got some weaknesses. Well, let God leave in, the, in, in, in there with it until you don't feel it anymore. How do you know when you're overcoming? When people used to talk to me, talk about me, I would, I would just have to respond in kind. But now I can give it to God. What did he say when you said that to him? He didn't say nothing. He didn't, he didn't even respond. I, and, and he didn't feel nothing on the inside rising up. See, some people don't externally respond, but, they, but they're bubbling on the inside. And they still some riding up about here. Sometimes it don't come out and sometimes it does. <laughs> See, so everybody's quiet and nice seemingly. Don't mean they got the victory. You should, you should give them an open heart surgery. Put down in there and see what you find. <laughs> what are you saying? But let patience have a perfect work. All right. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You know, uh, I was not raised up under this truth. When I got a uh, uh, little resume of what it was all about, I wanted it, everything that God had. And I might be on the altar every other time, every time. See, you know, I didn't, I had not known about fasting, and I thought fasting, and maybe having headaches and getting weak at the end of the day, because I'd never done it before, but I wanted it. And I didn't want to be short or along any line, even though some of the older saints might not be doing it, that don't make me no different. If God got it for me, I want it. Amen. And not only that, it's an, I find in the Word of God, it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. Then there are those who know they're short and, and not even seeing it. They've dismissed the idea. They've, they've seized their quest. <coughs> I might be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And I won't be uh, insulted, aggravated, when a precious face says, honey, you have to be poor. 
you disrespecting your husband? Are you using abusing to your wife? When you talk to me, talk to her, she's a child. But I, I, know, I know myself what just a moment. Well, I hope so. But I hope you're not giving yourself an A+. Plus. That you may be what? You may be what? That you may be perfect and entire. Perfect and entire. Wanting nothing. Wanting or lacking nothing. Listen, because I don't want you, nothing sticking out. Sometimes, uh, then years ago, you know, it was a little bit different now. Well, you know, women used to be all dressed up with the purse, they, um, the gloves and the purse and hats and all that, doesn't it? Uh, all matched up. <coughs> Come out. And, and the little rag of silver, you know, like four inches. <laughs> all this, this, all this shot shoes, purse and shot shoes, <laughs> dress and, and then, you know, and a pea green hat and, 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 and her, her laser falling off of her slipper. <laughs> you follow? <laughs> you understand? You understand? See, all the perfection she stayed before the mirror for days and for night and in the hell in order to say and need to be girlfriend. We're gonna come on, you gonna pray with me just a few moments? And we'll let you go to dinner dinner. Because you must like we eat and drink and drink until Jesus comes. Uh, well try to work with you here. Alright. Give me first Thessalonians. Let me show you something. Now we take too much as an option. Listen to the word of God. Read. First Thessalonians. Yes, read. It. For now we live. Take the word of God. Notice what Brother Hampton said. Read it for yourself. That's what we're doing. Come on. First Thessalonians three eight. Read. I mean, that's what I'm about. For now we live. Yes. If ye stand fast in the Lord. Then fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God what again? For thanks you? can we do what? Render to God again for you. Render to God again for you. For all the joy wherewith we joy. Yes. For your sakes before our God. Come on. Then. Night and day. Praying. Night and wait a minute. Night and day. What? Praying. Praying for you. Praying exceedingly. That we might see your face. That we might do what? Might see your face. See your face. And might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now, all of this fire that you pray night and day, if you have a lack in your faith, and you and, and then all of this is but the necessity. It's not an option. See? See, you, 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 there, there's, a, there's an imperfection in your faith. You supposedly trust God for this, but not for that. You got to trust God. We, what are they singing? To fight your battle. This is retaliatory spirit. If somebody demean you, uh, then you're going to dig up something on them. You know, uh, I saw uh, that up in the brother's face. You know what about her? She had three abortions. The retaliation. The retaliation is not necessarily hitting you with your fist, but it's just to get it back. It even. That's what retaliation is all about. It's a spirit. You can retaliate in a very subtle way. Your wife says, you know that. You know, yes, it's too bad everybody like that. You know, you, you back up. I know you like it too. See, it's subtle. You, that's what perfection is all about. See, you got to be perfect all together here. God help us out. Now here, you think, well, I've gotten all these years. I don't want you won't get back in the moment. And you certainly won't get back in the judgment. Come on with Night and day. Night and day. Pray exceedingly. Pray exceedingly. Wait a minute. Look at the effort you're putting forth. Why would they put forth such strenuous effort if it makes no difference? Come on with it. That we might see your face. Yeah. And might perfect that. We want to perfect it. We want to be a perfect. We want to be a whole man, a whole woman. We want to perfect that. We don't want to excuse it. We want to perfect it. We're not criticizing. We want to come and perfect it. Help you out and come up there. But if, we, but if you bend it, if it breaks, you know, you got, you, got another, you got a problem on your hand. You know, let me, this is the same. I was talking to an individual who knows, knows about this narcotic stuff. As an individual used to come here, you know, and, uh, and he went back and, and he got high again. Yeah. And he said, what did he do? What was, what did he uh, explain the situation? And I did what he broke. You see? Uh, they 
broke Judas. Peter denied Christ, but he didn't break. Follow me now. He back and he didn't break. There's a difference. See, I know because Jesus, I'm afraid that your faith don't fail. If you break, you the mess. You follow me? There's a difference. There's a difference there. See, and he says, have you broke? Then you got to be welded back together. And we, and we trust that the world will hold. That's why they want to try to counsel people and try to do work, do all the work. See, it, 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 you're not that just to know people personal business and all that kind of stuff. But, well, uh, but what? You got to know the extent of that problem. Not that you've got to be so detailed. You, you, you're not concerned about that. But I want to know some things so I'll know what actually happened and the extent of it and the effect of it. And then you went too far there. Uh, we're, uh, uh, we, uh, honey, we remember my husband, but that time I feel good. We had a, we had a kind of a, a back and forth situation here. And we, we and, and it got a little more heated and accelerated. And nothing. And you know, and uh, what, what happened? Well, you know, I just said that. Uh, well, I didn't. I said it too loud. No, I called him a three-letter word. <laughs> well, wait a minute, you didn't tell me the real issue. You broke. Have you ever said that since you were 19 years old? Some people start back and you took all the backslide and, and the first day they start back cursing like they used to. I mean, they didn't, they didn't even do the step. You follow me? I mean, they, I mean, they still can do what they accentuated. So and so and so. You know, they know how to emphasize it. Didn't they didn't do the thing. They didn't do the step. Well, you see this situation now. Now, if they revoked you, you have re-imbibed a habit. See, you you remind me. Now you become habitual again. You know what that means, don't you? You broke. He broke you. You didn't just flunk this test. You broke. There's a difference here.
But you are coming to Mount Zion. You are coming to Mount Zion. Listen, listen now. You want to know how it happened? I'm going to show you. And maybe, and maybe you might want to hop on this. Come, come over there. But you are coming to Mount Zion. You are coming to Mount Zion. And unto the city of the living God. Unto the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. And, and to an innumerable company of angels. An innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly. Wait a minute. You will be among a lot of angelic saints. Angels. They're going to be just like the angels in heaven. Only they have not been transformed yet. And they'll be examples to you. And when you got examples, that would enhance your possibilities. 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 See, when you're around people it would, would, would right fears here, well then that will challenge you. But if you're around people who are gossiping and talking and, and speculating and, and speaking to you that what you know not, well they will get the same spirit they got. Come on. To an innumerable company of angels. An innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly. The general assembly. And the church of the firstborn. And the church of the firstborn. Which are written in heaven. Written in heaven. And to God. And to the, God. The judge of all. The judge of all. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. When a church is Mount Zion indeed, it perfected the spirit of people. Not just the extra, not having dressed the right and in and this good this and that deal, and not just the national jury and makeup, but the spirits. Oh, if you follow me, we're going to conclude just shortly. Just read the latter portion of what you just told me. And to God, the judge of all. To God, the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men. The spirit of just men. Made perfect. Made perfect. You've got to have the, 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 the atmosphere has to be a challenge. <coughs> the inspiration has to be there. See, I don't know what you okay what you preach, but without inspiration, it has a phenomenal effect. I'm going to testify to witness to somebody, give them track, if they have no inspiration behind it. There's no that void. The spirit, now, now, but see, but when your very life and your devotion and your whole demeanor, amen, is a such, there's a challenge to be. They'll impress you. And you know what they're gonna say? And even your children, and even your relatives, and even your acquaintances. When I get saved, I want to be that sister so and so. Amen. 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 We have two or three hundred people here. You got to designate one individual. <coughs> that person has conveyed something, not just talk to them. And you didn't say you didn't say it, but they have shown it <coughs> in their spirit. Undeniably. They trust God. I never, I never seen them get mad. I never seen them go off on people. I never seen them retaliated. I never seen them manifest in any kind of retaliatory spirit. I seen them go all kinds of ways, and they turn the other cheek. Proverbs 16 to 
and you found it. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Uh, he didn't justify anything. In your, in, in, that's why people criticize him because they feel clean themselves. They, they criticize you because they feel uh, guiltless. They figure that they're above that. See, if you can criticize somebody, yeah, well, you just, that's pride. Now, I must be above them if I can criticize them. If I'm in a position to criticize them, I must be above them. Way in your own eyes. I think that's the word of God. <coughs> All the way from a man, what? I'm clean in his own eyes. Clean in his own eyes? What? what? Justify it. When you say, you did it. Well, but, but I, why well, you in your own eyes? You explain, you explain the way. But you, but you, you condemn somebody that's the same thing you're doing. And you might be doing it even worse. You better pray, and then you're in real trouble. Come on with it. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Come on with it. But the Lord weigheth the spirit. The Lord weighs the spirit. See, there will be no mistake. See, God has a balance. And, it, and the ways are just. And you be arguing in your own. See, that people don't be arguing in judgment. Lord, did I do this? Lord, did I do this? I do it. No. The Bible says it. They'll be in the judgment, still trying to justify themselves. When God has already pronounced their eternal doom. In the Bible says God got a, got a skill. And now, there are some people who might not be up to par in every detail that we interpret it because of a lack of knowledge, not because of rebellion, now that's a different situation. You understand? But because they don't understand and, uh, you know, and they might, uh, over the hair of the summer clothes might be transparent and they've got to get their jacket, you know, with their, with their straps and all this kind of stuff and skin. All right. One more time. All the ways of a man mm -hmm. are clean in his own eyes, yes. but the Lord weighed the spirits. Angel, Gabriel, bring my skill, please. I want to weigh my, I will weigh this brother here. This is righteousness. And this is their own ways. It's own ways of Didn't be but there. <laughs> God weighs the spirit. See, you testify and, and they shout, got people shouting your testimony and your exhortation and all this kind of stuff and all your sensation of your experiences. But God weighs the spirit. God, and he, and if we got to make he do it unmistakably. And, and to, uh, to convince you and, and to give you consolation, he's going to have a scale right there. Let you see it. Right here. Right here. Well, God, look at the scale. Look at the scale. Well, Lord, I didn't get mad. Look at the scale. That's the old one over in red. I'm going to eat. What you mean? Your eyes flashing? Your teeth gritting? You know all that kind of thing? Your nose running? And you, and with me. And then, and your thoughts are, are negative? Well, Lord, I didn't, I didn't mean to malign his name. Well, you didn't. How many times have you done it already? Lord, I didn't mean to, to uh, uh, diminish uh, the confidence people got in her by going back into some things that they didn't know about. I, I, I didn't mean well. Oh, you didn't. <coughs> You've done it before and you spread it all over. Read it again. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. All the ways of a man is clean in his own what? In his own eyes. In his own eyes. It's just as you do, but condemn everything somebody else do. Come on. But the spirit, the Lord weighed the spirit. The Lord weighed the spirit. See, now let me show you this. Show you. See, uh, why would he weigh the spirit? See, see the, a man's spirit is unmistakably him. See, that's what you're all about, the spirit. Something you might mistake, but you're a mistake of spirit. See, you don't get it, you don't get it in the wrong spirit by mistake. That's you. That's what you're all about inside. And you don't manifest as uh, a bad spirit. Uh, I didn't mistake it. So 
gotten with your spirit. Because he, hey, he doesn't like me. You're, you're, you're just might not be uh, all together long enough. Uh, maybe, maybe so, maybe that was, maybe that was an inch shorter than it should be. But God said, well, that's all she had. And she was careful how she said so uh, in this case. And she did a little nice one, you know. So that's, the, that's not what she wants. She didn't conform to the truth and to the proper standard for the spirit. But being mad, she did that to satisfy something inside her. She would tell it, of course, she wanted to try to pacify her wrath by getting back. That, that's unmistakable. She don't have to be taught that. That's what she is. So, God, the God of the Holy Spirit. Depart from me. Roll out in just a moment. You'll get a scale. You see that? Well, that's said denial, but it's just right. That's right, that's right. But Lord, I fasted twice a week. Shake your spirit. Lord, I only had one wife. Shake your spirit. How do you treat her? But Lord, when, when they, at the funeral, they give me so many accolades. Check your spirit. You can put a scale in everything. Now, children, uh, but we're, the Bible said that day of Noah, whatever Noah preached, he didn't get no response. All those church people, 120 years, and they did it until the day Noah entered the ark. They were going to be jealous that the Bible said, when they were the son of man, it will be the same as the days of Noah. Now, I've never seen such a irresponsive group all everywhere you go anymore. They are almost immovable. God can thunder from heaven. God can perform miracles of judgment around them. They're still on the world. <sighs> we find striving anymore. No, many old saints, when they got light on this gospel and what consecration was all about, and they would sense something in them. Well, I feel an unholy feeling. It ain't what we come to does it. Anything they akin to that. But they, we, when, when people came against me, Lord, I felt retaliatory. And now, and now I'm wishing their demise. And Lord, I, I didn't, I didn't overreact, but I, but I could have. It was in me. And one more step, I would have, because it was in me. And so, I want to get rid of that spirit. Not just move it all, but I want to get rid of that spirit. You'll find many people now. One sister, when she sensed something about her spirit, when she learned this truth, she, she built her all down back and prayed three hours a day until she cured it. Until she was perfect and complete. And the thing that she, was troubling her, she never saw it again. Was she willing to go as far as she had to go? Lord, give me victory, I'll die. Nothing else matters. That's the one help. God got it. We'll pray with you. Well, shall we stand? Go on that. Pray with me. Shall we stand? How many times I do it when I go home? You, you probably forget about it. Oh, well, you're so impressed with it. The next meal day. That's one thing I met at the moment. And the, the, the way you cannot hold anyone else responsible for your spirit. Lord, well, you know what they did to me. Well, I'm going to get responsible for your spirit, not somebody else. I'm not sure the young red can do. The red pond are behind uh, the little clean coat that we live in. And the children were ready for church. One of the brothers' son uh, was out there with my son and he pushed him off. And he came to the pastor and he just did it. And so I. Uh,
dressed all up. And so uh, he went in crying. What happened to you? I'm gonna give you, I feel like, I'm gonna give you a whip. He said, well, lie pushed me in water and you shouldn't have been so close. You shouldn't have been so close to allow him to do that. You shouldn't allow him to provoke him to that extent. You shouldn't allow them to uh, push you uh, until you became uh, uh, retaliatory because you felt it coming. I, I, I give you a premonition. You with us on search me, oh God, and try mine. Or today, how they go? Search me, oh God. You, you don't have to find it.